Uh, the next uh, uh, speaker which was announced is Marco Gori. Uh, he could not make it, but we have a perfect substitute. Uh, it's Alessandro Betti. He's from the Siena Artificial Intelligence Lab. Uh, Alessandro, please. Um, I'll try to share. Can you see the slide correctly? Yeah. Do you see it? Okay, so uh, thank you. I'm Alessandro Betti, from a postdoc from SeiLab at the University of Siena. And in the next few minutes, uh, I would like to talk about uh, an activity that we are conducting together with uh, Marco Gori, Enrico Meloni and Andrea Zuberini about learning the parameters of a dynamic SIR model. Before we start, just a warning. Uh, I want to warn you that uh, the content of this presentation is based on a very pre preliminary research. And this uh, comment is particularly relevant for the experimental uh, result that I will show at the end of the talk. So first of all, I would like to uh, revise the basic SIR model just to fix the notation. So in, in the classical, uh, uh, SIR model, we assume that the population, uh, that we have a constant population divided into three uh, groups uh, that are the susceptible, the infectious, and the removed. And um, uh, I will call X of T the number of susceptible at time T, Y of T the number of infectious at time T, and Z of T the number of removed at time T. And of course, since we have a constant population, the sum of all these three variables should be constant for any time. Um, in this, in the simplest uh, formulation, SIR um, model uh, is, um, is defined through a system of three um, ordinary differential equation, which basically tells how each of the variable changes over time. And once you give initial conditions, um, the, uh, the dynamic of, of the system is completely specified by the values of, of, of beta and of gamma, which are the infection rate and removal rate. And it's also convenient to define this reproduction number, which is in this case, R note, uh, is the uh, ratio between, is just a ratio between uh, beta and gamma. So in what follows, we will consider a slight uh, generalization of this uh, epidemiological model, which is, called, which is known as dynamic SIR, where we assume that uh, the infection rate and removal rate uh, can have uh, temporal variation. So we allow for extra flexibility uh, to model changes in the way in which the infection uh, grows. So the problem that we try to, to tackle, as I anticipated, is the problem of learning uh, this, uh, this function, beta of t and gamma of t, together with um, a fatality rate delta, using supervision only on the number of deceased. Um, once we assume that uh, this, the estimate for the number of deceased can, for example, in, in its simplest uh, formulation, uh, be expressed in terms of the solution of the SIR model as a fraction of the removed. So if we call W of T the number of deceased at a certain time, then uh, we assume that we can express this number in terms of Z of T. And we decided to model, uh, to use only uh, supervision from that, because as far as we understand, but this of course is debatable, um, this is one of the um, measurements um, of the simplest measurement that we can get that compares to the other, that, for example, the number of, of infections uh, suffer from probably a smaller error. Um, so this is the general uh, statement of the problem. Uh, now let me be a little bit more precise on what we try to do. So we, we try to formulate learning as the minimization of some quantity um, that can be built as follows. So suppose you fixed a certain values of uh, this, this function. So you give some function, beta, gamma, and delta, that for now on I will concisely uh, refers to as U, 
And once you have fixed U and you have given some initial condition, then you can solve the SIR and get an estimate for W that of course is a function of time that depend on the choice that you have done on, the, um, on, on U. And then on the other hand, you have the, your, your, uh, your supervision, your data that are, are indicated with W hat of T. Um, and then what you can do is you can build this index, this functional as f of u, which is the sum, the integral of, over time <clears throat> of, a, of a loss, which is a square loss that, that uh, indicates the difference between uh, the, the estimated values of the debts and the, um, and, the, uh, and the data. And then we can formulate the learning problem, we can state the learning problem by saying uh, they would want to find the, the parameters that minimize this functional. And of course, this, uh, of course, this um, is uh, in its general formulation uh, in calculus of variation is as a control problem on the variable u. And we have decided to tackle this problem using a gradient flow on, on, on uh, f. So we start from uh, a guess uh, u naught of t an initial condition you know you know of t and then for every t we we slightly uh, adjust we adjust at every step this uh, this initial uh, condition to get the solution of, of the problem so now as i said i will try to show you some uh, preliminary experimental results uh, and as i warn you these are these are rather uh, there is much room for improvement, but I think that um, uh, uh, they will as well um, give you much more intuition about what we, we, are, we are trying to do. Um, so we, we, we perform an experiment using data from various regions, uh, Italian regions, and here I've reported the result for uh, Lombardia. So you see in the left side of the screen, in the upper part, there is uh, the um, the temporal uh, dynamics of, of the parameters uh, uh, that, that we consider, the beta, gamma, and, and delta, you can see that here we have chosen to, to, to have a constant uh, delta. So delta is chosen to be a constant function whose, whose value, however, is, is learned, while beta and gamma uh, are developed as, as, function, as true function of time. Um, in, the, in the lower part of the slide, you can see the corresponding um, value of the R node uh, relative to, to these values of, of, of beta and, and gamma. And looking at the magenta line, you can appreciate uh, where, these, um, where these values go below one. While on the right part of the, of the slide, you can see uh, the dynamics of the SIR uh, model, uh, which is um, in, in the general behavior follows uh, the, the classical SIR model, but uh, is, as you can see, slightly uh, distorted um, from the fact that you have indeed um, varying uh, coefficients. Okay, so uh, these instead are, are the result on the fitting of the data. So on the left side, you can see uh, the fitting that we are actually uh, performing on, on the deaths. Um, and you can see that you have uh, the, the red dots are, are, are the data. Uh, the one which are on the blue line are the dots that, that are actually have been used to perform the fitting, uh, while the other uh, data, the one over the, uh, the, the um, the yellow uh, line are, are some data that we kept aside to uh, evaluate our prediction. And you can see that at the beginning prediction uh, is, uh, is rather accurate, but then you have an underestimate of, of the deaths. And while on the right side, you can see the, um, uh, our estimate for the infectious um, that is uh, plotted against uh, together with uh, the real data uh, that we that we collected from the um, uh, official uh, measurements, uh, and you can see here that uh, there is this strange 
uh, behavior at the end where our prediction go below uh, the, uh, the, the actual data, which is rather suspicious in this case. Um, so yes, this is uh, pretty much everything I wanted to say. Uh, I'll thank you very much for your listening and your attention and for having given me the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you.